had this crazy fixation with candy. Now, I'm not exactly sure how it started, but it's happening. It's been whispering at my stomach and clawing at my esophagus and disintegrating the very flesh from my tongue. See, I, I just want to live. 400 years of slavery, I think not. I want to be thought of as a whole, and not just three-fifths respected, without having to deal with the tyranny and the snickers of my oppressors. But these airheads can't seem to get it through their thick skulls that I'm more than just a nerd. She would much rather me, yeah, shorty over there, shorty in the blue jeans, I know you hear me. Fraudulent, immature, uneducated brothers only after her Kit Kat, but not I. I want to travel through her Milky Way plant and saw her she kisses upon her chest, make love to her as I fast break through her system, making sure she experiences each one of our Reese's Pieces. As I watch, as her stars burst one by one, taking her to joyous heights of sexual euphoria, which she's never imagined, longing for that feeling, that, that. <laughs> but see, Mary Jane doesn't appreciate me. She'd rather chase Mike and Ike for the hundred grand while the only goal is to give her junior a mint or impregnate her with baby Ruth. But she thought they wouldn't trick her. But leaving the lives right before her eyes, they left her torn. And now she's confused. Because as she looks at three musketeers for justice, little does she know, it's paid in. Man, I just want to say the energy in this room is infectious. Listen. Like, I'm just listening to each person, I'm like, yeah, 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 talk that shit, talk that shit. And I want you to really take that with you for real because I mean, the day and age that we're living in, I'm not gonna go too deep, you feel me? But there's a lot of things out there that's telling you not to be who you are, right? That's telling you one of my favorite poems. I want you to write this down if you got something to write with it on your phones, whatever. It's called Our Deepest Fear. And my favorite part about that poem says, your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that others feel comfortable around you. In short, I'm the shit and I know it. You feel me? Oh, you think you this, you think you that. I stopped thinking years ago. I know. I want you to say that with me. I know. I know. I know. I know damn well. I know damn well. And that's it. And that's it. And you take that with you and you keep on moving and striving. And remember this. Stop telling your big dreams to small-minded people. I'm gonna say that one time because somebody somebody just stepped back in. Stop telling your big dreams to small-minded people. Because some of the things you're seeking to accomplish, you feel me? They can't see it. Because they're not looking at it through your lens. You feel me? Get around people that encourage you, right? And they don't drain you without your consent. <laughs> next piece, um, I love this piece so much. Um, it was actually a speech, but I turned it into a poem. Uh, my senior year when I was in college, I did the uh, Mr. HBCU competition. And uh, just a step of faith, right? I went to my college president. Uh, they had just started enacting like the kings of the colleges, so to speak. And um, the guys were telling me about it at this conference. And I'm like, hmm, I want to go. So the president was like, well, if you go, do you promise to win? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to win. What you mean? Go to lose? Well, I was scared as hell. But I didn't want him to see that, though. So I went to the event. Long story short, <laughs> I got crowned at the end of the event. You feel okay. me? So I love that speech so much, I turned it into a poem. So rock with me. <clears throat> Former U.S. President John F. Kennedy eloquently creates an argument that has served as the catalyst for intellectual and contentious debate. He states that the goal of education is the advancement of knowledge and the dissemination of truth. I agree. The goal of education is truly the advancement of knowledge and the dissemination of truth, however. We as African-American men have been lying to ourselves for years. Think back. Since the inception of HBCUs in 1837, we have sought to provide the highest forms of education possible to minorities worldwide, especially black men. But we can see an alarming issue plaguing our black colleges today. That issue, the apparent lack of black male presence. HBCUs are truly the cornerstones of African-American history and culture. However, the question was asked. Are black males truly the catalyst for the survival of these great institutions? I would argue this very point. How can we, as black males, be the catalyst for the survival of these great institutions if we ourselves are increasingly becoming non-existent? Mm -hmm. A recent study by the Department of Education explicitly states that black men make up 7.9% of 18 to 24 year olds in America. However, black men only represent 2.8% of undergraduates. In addition, only 29% of black males are graduating in six years from HBCUs. 
credible scholars argue that this is indeed due to a lack of positive male role models and the absence of the male in the home. Moreover, I contend a different reason. These young men were never taught how to properly utilize their bodies since birth. Here's why. They have never been taught how to stay ahead of the game, therefore they see all the wrong things. They know right from wrong, yet they speak all the wrong things out of their mouth, so the devil consistently taps their chin. They bear the weight of the world on their shoulders, designed to keep their back straight, their chest out to stomach the pain. But they waste time on things they don't need, like thighs and legs, they don't have the ankles to support them, so they consistently stay defeated. Ladies and gentlemen, our young men are trapped in a world where value systems are based on the latest fashions, social trends, and fictitious desire for immediate economic stability. Education seems to no longer be in the forefront of the mods bar youth of world, where young men are so wrapped up in social media but struggle to solve basic social problems. Mm. Can tell you about the new Jordan Gamma Blues, but can't explain scientific gamma rays. Refer to themselves as real niggas instead of real men. And we wonder why the black male is increasingly becoming non existent in the halls of these great institutions. As I come to a close, I'm reminded of the sentiments of the late great Dr. Martin Luther King, who once proclaimed, at the time is always right to do what's right. And at this point, the right thing to begin doing is telling these young men the truth. A wise man once stated that adversity is the first path to truth. And as a mentor, my duty is to pave the way. My question to you, how many roads have you paved? Mm. That's my brother. <laughs> Um, so this piece here, uh, I can't remember how it started, uh, I wrote this one when I, uh, I had seen something on uh, social media, and uh, really quickly, let me say something about social media, right? Understand that social media is forever. Legit. If you got kids, if you're a mentor, you got a job, whatever the case may be, understand that as soon as you hit that post button, it's on the internet forever. And especially if you have a platform, you feel me? You have a responsibility. Regardless of whether you want that responsibility or not. I done seen folk get kicked out of their jobs, relationships lost, we done seen enough of that. A whole bunch of turmoil over something that could have simply stayed off the internet. You feel me? So understand that when you hit that post button, the internet is forever. Rock with me. Yes. Come on, bro. My name is William. And as we speak, more than 10 plus Hawthorne County police officers have their weapons pointed in my direction, awaiting. Awaiting the opportunity to turn this corner into my coffin. Isn't it ironic? The excuses they use to execute us. And if not for Sky, that's probably where I would be right now. Do you know your rights, suspect? My name is William, not suspect, but it seems as though that they have the right to remain violent because anything we say or may suddenly do could potentially have us killed. We have the right to an attorney who will assume our guilt long before hearing our side of the story, but it makes sense because a system cannot fail those it was never built to protect, mighty convenient. How at this very moment, racist bigots are more concerned with the color of a cartoon character than migrant children at overcrowded concentration camps, sporting aluminum blankets and inhumane conditions, being denied access to basic human necessities. Speak. Like soap, running water, adequate food to eat, and toothpaste, you know, not my aerial is starting to sound a lot like not my swimming pool. Not my public school. Not my water fountain. Don't tell me not to yell because that's the only time things begin to change. I find it oddly distasteful that we expect far more from our comedians than we do from our congressmen. More from our pop stars than we do from our politicians and our president. And he says we're making America <coughs> great again. Mm. Mm. Well, peep this. As we speak, the United States of America currently ranks 38th in math, 27th in healthcare and education, 26th in life expectancy, and 24th in science and reading. We lead the world in only four major categories. One, prisoners locked up per capita. Two, infant mortality. Three, the number of adults who believe that angels are real. Four, defense budget spending, where we spend more than 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are our allies. So the next time someone yells from their racist and crusted lips that we're making America great again, you ask them, which part? Listen. Okay. okay. All right. All right. It's my last one because, well, my brain's on overload right now. It takes a lot to remember all this. So I gotta keep at least five in the chamber. You feel me? Um, so this last piece, right? Um, I'm not gonna get no disclaimer about how I came about it, but it just really means a lot to me. You feel me? 
and it's one that any set that I do, I always make sure I include this poem. This is one of the very first poems that I actually felt myself break out of my shell. It takes a lot to get up here, you feel me? Amen. So give a hand clap or applause to everyone that came up here. I'm a huge, huge proponent. When we say respect the mic, I will run up on you like, hey, somebody's speaking. You feel me? It takes a lot to get up here. You know what I'm saying? It takes a lot to have a platform, period, and to actually have people trust you that you're gonna manage that space effectively. You feel me? Anybody can hold an event, but are you managing it? Mm -hmm. You feel me? When mm -hmm. folk get out of control, are you managing it? In your life, are you managing it? You feel me? So, it's my last piece. I hope y'all rock. Step into the camera chair. Come on. Swing. Sweet chariot. Coming forth to carry me home. Swing low. Sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. 400 years ago, we were enslaved, bound by our arms, necks, and our legs. We've broken those chains. We've snatched them from our necks, broken them from our arms, and kicked them from our legs. We're still held captive. Captive to the intellect in which we refuse to allow penetration into our minds. It's called ignorance. A disease in which many are plagued with to this very day. I read this letter by a man who goes by the name of Willie Lynch. And he oh, proclaimed God. that he found a way to enslave our minds for the next 300 years. And thus far, 80% of his letters come true. He said to put the old black males versus the young black males. And we see it today through comments like, don't tell me what to do. You're not my father. He said to put the light-skinned slaves versus the dark-skinned slaves. And we see it today through comments like, Team light skin, Team dark skin. She talks white. But I would like to know, where does all this division come from? See, back in the day, there were two types of Negroes. There were your house Negroes and your field Negroes. See, the house Negroes lived with the master, ate with the master, and dressed pretty well. All those field Negroes slave mercifully in the cotton fields picking cotton that their children might have a place to rest their heads at night. So someone tell me, where have all of our field Negroes gone? We went gracefully across plantations like quarterbacks on football fields, yelling things like, hut one, hut two, go long. Well, my grandmother lived in hut one and my grandfather lived in hut two and they went long. Bloody feet from walking across plantations that I might receive a tangible education. Have you ever seen death? The beating of two horses in opposite directions, only to tear that man's flesh from his bones and instill the fear of God in those slaves. Harriet Tubman states that her only regret is that she freed hundreds of slaves. Mm -hmm. But she could have freed thousands if only they knew they were slaves. Mm -hmm. Understand that until we free our minds, we will always be held captive. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah.